What's up, guys? Coach Jonathan here. Hey, I want to talk about how to guarantee your success and the change you want to make. Now, straight up, 13 years sober, owned a gym. I'm in the fitness world. I do sales, so so I live in the real world. Um, I'm not a woo-woo guy. I like really concrete things. And so my goal today is to walk through, like, what can actually help you effectively make a change. It's my belief that most people want to change. There's probably something that you want to improve or to change entirely. And so I want to help because in my years of sobriety, in my years of running a business, in my years of coaching fitness, just all the stuff I do, what I realize is there's usually an approach that people take to change, but it doesn't take into account how humans actually operate. And there's usually ways that create less resistance that also increase the likelihood of your change happening. So let's get to it. Do you feel like you want to change but never succeed? Have you started a fitness program or diet but faded quickly? Have you tried to wake up earlier or stay later to fit that new thing in? Have you tried to believe things about yourself but struggle to see them show up in tangible ways in your life? And do you feel like no new information can help? So like, you know, most people have tried to do something and then like it just didn't, you know, stick. Or, you know, you tried to just add it on top of all the other stuff. Like just add this new thing, this side hustle, just whatever that is. Or you, you try to be like, like to affirm yourself, by like believe this thing about yourself or, you know, think about it, but it just doesn't really like show up in your life. Um, or you feel like you've read every book, watched every YouTube video and, you know, listen to every podcast, right? So it's like, do you feel like you want to change? But like, there's just this evidence that you feel like you've tried this stuff or you've gone through these processes, but it just doesn't work. Now, um, why even listen to me? Um, so when I give you this list, this list is just stuff about me that I've been able to do. And I'm going to be straight up. Like I'm not special, man. I just, I look at this and I think about, Oh, okay. I have been able to do a few things and there's a process that I went through. So number one, I used to be a drug addict. I've been sober 13 years. Um, I had a 1.2 GPA, my first two tries in college. The third time I got a 4.0. Um, I built a 50 K a month gym and then I'm a sales professional and I'm just trying to help people change. So, um, you know, this is kind of like a little bit of a resume, but like the reason I put that there is I'm like, well, what have I been able to do or what evidence is there of change in my life? And so there's that. Um, but I'm not all that, man. I don't have superhuman ability. I don't have a program to sell you. And I just care more about you succeeding than you probably do. Um, so that's why I do this stuff, man. Like I just genuinely care about people. So let's get to it. We're going to, uh, how do you successfully change? It's got my face on it. How do you successfully change? This is where we're going to spend most of our time is on this next thing. Okay. So Robert Diltz is a sociologist and he talked about logical levels of change. And so what he was studying was how people actually change and then what factors caused them to change and then rated them in basically rated them in terms of their effectiveness. So when you look at a pyramid like this, this one has five levels. The idea of a pyramid is that the base, like, the wider the base, the stronger the foundation, but also as the pyramid gets taller, it's more stable. So you can have a real narrow base and you can build a taller pyramid, but it doesn't have any structure, right? So like this is where you get into maybe you try a fitness thing and you had a little bit of short-term success, but because it was built on the wrong thing, like you don't have very good long-term success. We'll talk about that a little bit. Um, there's a mechanism, especially I, I coach fitness, you know, still do coach fitness, but like there's a lot of stuff that like, there's some problems there because like what gets you started might not be what gets you going long term. And so you're building a tall pyramid, but narrow base. There's not a lot of structure there, not a lot of support. So the other piece is if you do the pyramid, the, the base is the one that makes the most difference. So you, it's not that you ignore the four above it, but if you put all of your energy into the bottom, it will have an effect on things above. If you put all your energy into the top, which like this top one for a lot of like for nutrition, a lot of people start with supplements. Supplements is like the last thing to start with, with nutrition. There's a lot of other things that if you were to spend time on that, your return is far outsized than spending your time on like supplements. Okay. Um, so let's get into it. So the first, uh, Robert Diltz, his first thing was environment. Okay. That's people and like physical location. And then I also include in this, like, uh, like, like the content that you consume and listen to and all that. There, there's another one that correlates to it, but like, you know, because content is like algorithmic and you end up like listening to a lot of the same stuff and all that, like I put that in environment. So these are the things that have a high level effect on you because they're always like influencing you and like, 
because you're around it, you can't necessarily like argue against it or fight against it. Like it just is what it is. Okay. So great example, drug addiction. If you go back to the same people and places, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that line up with how you used to do things. So the amount of friction is very low. It's very easy to go back into your old way of behavior. Right? So a lot of time when I used to work in rehab, also when I went to rehab, like people would just go home and then they just fall into their old ways. Well, the environment is very conducive to that. Like it's very easy for them to know where to get drugs and how to get back into it. And it's just like, so, so simple. Right. But the opposite's also true. Like when it comes to fitness, like if you get around the right people or the right place, or you understand something about yourself, you can choose the environment. So for some people that like they can't work out in their garage, but they know if they stop at the physical gym on their way home, they'll work out. So they choose to go to that environment that makes that thing more likely to happen. Or when they work out with their friend, they're more likely to do it. That's a person, that's a person environment. And so you, this can be, this can be like any type of influence, man. This could be, you know, someone's positive or negative influence on you. Like, does that person build you up or break you down? That's an environment thing. It's a person It's someone you put yourself in, uh, nearby, you're probably not going to change them and stuff like that. So by choosing to be around that person, you're choosing a certain type of condition, which influences everything else up here. So if you want to change, if you feel like you're struggling, the question is, uh, is your current environment conducive to change? Or do you know something about in the past, like when you've been successful or a certain type of environment that does make you successful, choosing the environment and, and, and designing the environment makes it much more likely that your change is going to happen. Okay. So that's the first one. So now we got the second one, which is the actual behavior. Okay. So remember earlier when I was telling you about a skinny pyramid, that's tall and it has to do with fitness. So like some people they'll start with the behavior of like, just work out. Right. So they'll start working out. They'll get some progress, but then they have parts of their environment that, that pull them backwards. And that could be like their spouse isn't on board, or it could be like, um, you know, they, they're trying to just make themselves work out in the garage. And so they're willpowering themselves, but eventually that environment overrides the behavior. Okay. So same thing. Someone gets out of rehab, they go home, they're sober, they feel good, but they go back to the same people and places. And they're like, you know, trying to stay sober, trying to stay sober, but that environment erodes their willpower of that behavior. Cause it's a lot of work. Whereas if you were like an environment where like using drugs is not the norm and like people don't do it, like it's way easier to stay sober because the environment is not working against you. So you use less willpower. Okay. So that's like behavior, the things that you do or don't do. So you can change a behavior, but like if the environment works against it, the chances of your success are less likely. But if you want, if you get into the right environment, you can build behavior on top of the environment. And now you're increasing the likelihood that the behavior becomes consistent. So like when I ran my gym or like when I work with people in fitness, like I always say like, can you work out three days a week? That's like where I start. And like a lot of people are kind of surprised by that. Cause I'm like, you know, just three days or like, I feel like I need to work out six days or something. I'm like, no, you need to work out three days. And the reason you need to work out three days is because you don't have a habit yet. So we're not going to make it super difficult. We're just going to do three. That's doable. We're going to figure that out. Let's do that for like three months straight. Well, you do that for three months, you start to build the behavior and the behavior becomes normalized. Plus you're in an environment that makes it like more likely to happen, whether that's like an online community, an in-person community, whatever that looks like. But now it's more likely to happen. So you do that behavior consistently. You build a habit. Now adding a fourth day is easy because the behavior is already there. It's normalized. It's very simple to do. It's not a big extreme reach based on your past record and, and the naturalness of doing it. Whereas before, everything was hard because you're building it into your lifestyle, right? So that's an example of stacking behavior on top of environment, right? The next one's information. This is where like a lot of people start. A lot of people feel like they're not making progress because they don't have the right information yet. There is information that can help you with stuff and all that. But like for the most part, the most people don't need more information. They need a better environment that drives better behaviors. So you can get into this trap where you think, oh, I just need to find the right book or the right person to follow, the right coach and all that type of stuff. And there are definitely degrees, right? So there are better coaches, worse coaches. There are systems that work, systems that don't. But fundamentally, if you just go straight for more information, but you, you're in a bad environment or you're like struggling to have good behavior because the environment's bad or you don't know the right behaviors to begin with, like all that, all the, you can get all the information in the world. You're not going to, you're not going to actually change most likely. Okay. Um, 
Then the next one is beliefs. What do you believe to be right and wrong and to be true and false? So here's an example. I don't believe in once an addict, always an addict. Some people do. So if you believe once an addict, always an addict, then like you would not say that it's problematic for you to go back to addiction. So to relapse, right? Whereas like for me, like I'm not a drug addict anymore. I don't do drugs. Like, it's not something I do anymore. So like that belief system influences my behavior, but also, my environment and behavior over the past 13 years informs that belief. So because I've consistently maintained my sobriety, but also like I live in a way where I don't even care about going back to it anymore, that stacks on top of that, right? So a lot of people, sometimes they think like, I just need to affirm this thing or believe this thing. And it's like, well, you can, and that's important. But if you have all this other stuff working against you, like you're consuming information that's against this belief you're trying to adopt, or you're behaving one way, but just trying to believe yourself into a change, but that behavior doesn't lead to the change you're trying to believe in anyways. So like, that's a fitness thing. Like if you're not doing the right stuff, like it doesn't matter how much belief you have, your behavior ain't going to lead to it. So like, until you change your behavior that reinforces the belief, it's going to be problematic. Um, so, so you can kind of see how, like, just starting with affirmations, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's always, like, what's what do you do on a daily, monthly, or weekly, monthly basis that reaffirms that that belief, right? Like, when you say, I, I am doing this thing or I'm becoming this and whatever, like, what are the actions that line up with that? Which the next one's pretty closely tied to that. And so the top is your identity. And so that's what you believe about who you are. So, I, like, I'm, I'm a sober man. Like, I just believe that about myself. Um, I have evidence for it. It informs my behaviors. It informs my beliefs. Like the way I feel today and experience life, that's why I don't believe once an act, always an act. Cause I'm like, I don't feel that way. I don't have those propensities. And I'm like, I haven't been dealing with addiction for a long time. So like no reason for me to start believing I'm an addict again today. I don't think it's a good thought process. And I think you're, if you have an identity based on that it has a negative influence, but I have all these other things that built that up over time. So in your life. Okay. So, so when I say most often, uh, when I say most often, it's best to build from the top up. I do have one thing about that. Sometimes in your life, you will have an experience that intersects one of these that cascades into other places. So for example, um, you know, I'm a sales professional now. Um, whenever the guy that hired me to do this, I'd done sales in my gym and I always, you know, always felt like behind. I always felt like I wasn't doing well and stuff like that. But when he sat down and talked to me, what well, he basically, he, he said he had more belief in my ability than I did myself. And then because he said that, and then based on like how he valued my skill, how well he paid me and how well he treat me, that moment intersected and it changed my belief immediately. So like there are times where like you will have a moment like that. But if you like walk around waiting for that moment, you're missing out on the opportunity to address some of these other things. So there are times where like you have events or experiences. A lot of them, a lot of people have like childhood experiences, whether those are positive or negative, that influence identity, like who we see ourselves and how we value our worth. And that can cascade into these other places. So it's not always bottom up. But for the most part, if you're like day one saying today, like, how can I successfully change? The easiest way to do it is to think about the environment. What's the place where what I'm doing is normal? And then who are the people who normalize what I'm doing? So best example I got of this. So I, when I went to college at Oral Roberts University, I had gotten into fitness. I was coaching CrossFit uh, or uh, doing CrossFit. And so when I went to Oral Roberts, they had a, an affiliate CrossFit affiliate that met in the uh, aerobic center and I met the coach there and I started training there. And like all those people were like 10, 15 years older than me. Um, none of them had a background in substance abuse. They were all just normal people. Those are the people I started hanging out with. So when I went to college, I look back now and like, I was just working out, but what I did was I found a community where like they did not live the way I used to live my life. They were like no issues with drugs and all that. And so their lives were completely focused on everything else. Right. So I had, you know, kind of serendipitously became a part of a community where like that was where I was trying to go. Like I had just gotten done. I went through, I had gone through rehab again. I had worked there for 18 months and I wanted to keep that progress going. So I went and I started working out with them, but also I started hanging out with them. Those are the people I went to church with. Those are the people I spent extra time with. And like what I realized now was I had gotten myself around people who they like all this stuff was already in place, but I just got in the right environment. And then I started modeling behaviors. And then I started linking up with where they got information from and what, then I started like adopting what they thought was true or false or what was right or wrong. And then that shaped my identity. And so like, 
I've noticed that like anytime like I'm going into a new thing, like I always think about the environment first. Like I think about my office, like how can I like make what I want to happen the smoothest, easiest, simplest thing to happen? Like that's an environment thing. Um, I can look back in times in my life when I felt most productive and most content. I didn't have a lot of complexity in my life. The environment is relatively simple. I was focused on a couple of things. Um, and, and, and those were the times where I felt most consistently moving forward in the right direction. So when you think about change, you think about the environment and then the way you assess the environment is by behaviors. So you look at the environment and then you say like, I want these behaviors. Does this environment normalize or make those behaviors easier? If the answer is yes, that's the environment you want to start trying to get into. Okay. For some people, they don't know what to do yet. So like a lot of the work that I do that I'm starting to do with, um, you know, some of the stuff I'm trying to do is I am trying to create growth community about this growth minded community and, and fitness for men in recovery, because there was a time where like, I couldn't afford $200 a month to go to a CrossFit affiliate and be around those people and have that type of structure. So a lot of my work is like, how can I give to Jonathan 13 years ago, who was just getting sober, but knew he didn't want to be once an addict, always an addict. And he wanted to be able to associate with people who were growth minded and moving in the right direction. And he cared about fitness, which I think is a huge part that's underserved in the recovery community. Like how can I get that stuff and like compartmentalize that into a place where I can show up? So like that's a digital environment. Don't get me wrong. I love when people get into a physical environment, but that's a type of environment. But like, what, how do you find that stuff, man? Like go find it. It's out there. But like when you start to have a singular focus of environment based on behavior, then all this other stuff you don't need to worry so much about. Like you don't need to go read a book about affirmations or like you don't need to go listen to another 700 episodes of podcasts. You need to always come back to environment behavior, environment behavior. When I don't like what's happening in my sales career, environment behavior, environment behavior, marriage, kids, my fitness, whatever it is, I always come back to those things. So that's how you successfully implement and make a change, right? Is you, you get down to what influences the change the most and how can you actively choose what makes the change normal faster? The, the, what, what makes it the norm in your life faster? So thanks for your attention, guys. I appreciate it. Um, this is definitely, uh, this is the type of thing I go back to. I go back through this in my own, my own, myself. So like you watch this now, you watch again in three months, you're a different person. Like, so, so go back through this. This is an iterative process. It's a process I live. It's a process we live. So I appreciate you guys and I'll talk to you soon.